Hello and welcome back to Personality Profile. Now this personality, you see, once upon a time, there was a word that was in the political circles, say, nepotism. <laughs> if ever nepotism had meant anything to me, it's probably today. But maybe during the interview, you will understand it. You see, if you're as old as I am, then to you, she's probably Abba. If you're not, and you're much younger, then to you, she's Mrs. Adams of Adam's Apple. I am here to talk to Joyce Enima Amwa. She has been in the arts. She's a thespian in the arts. She's written plays, directed plays, and acted plays, including films. And I'm sure her story hasn't been told as much. And I'm here to find out exactly what her story is. This is going to be one of my most exciting and emotional interviews I've ever done. I am here in the studios of Sapphire Ghana Limited. So as soon as they say Sapphire Ghana Limited, then you know that somewhere in the undertone there is Kwekwe Sinti or there is KSM. And then if I'm saying that, then I'm talking to KSM's sister, who is Joyce Enima Amwa, who happens to be my, I'll tell you later in the interview, <laughs> hence the nepotism, <laughs> but I'm here. And I'm going to be extremely professional. This is not family business. This is professional. Auntie Joyce, no. Uh, Mrs. Adams, <laughs> for the purpose of the interview, how do I refer to you? Um, I don't know, actually. I mean, I've always called her Auntie Joyce. Auntie Joyce. I think we'll stick to that. I'll stick to Auntie yes, Joyce. Yeah, stick to Auntie Joyce. Stick to, that. stick to Auntie Joyce. And how do I address you? Nana. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nana, Nana is just fine. Nana is just fine. Okay. It's just fine. Okay, Nana. As a choice, I want to go back to Abba. Mm -hmm. I want to go back to Abba. Now, that was probably the Adam's apples, you know, then. <laughs> Time. When probably cinema was revolutionized. And how it happened, I don't know, because I remember as part of your Christmas package, you need to go and watch Love Brood in the African Port. And okay. for many Christmases as I was growing up, it was part of your shadow to go and watch the same film over and over. You must have done something right or hypnotized the whole nation. What happened then? Well, you know, I was really quite amazed myself, right? So here I am, young woman, and I'd done a bit of TV and stage and all that. So I get um, a call from Mr. Ansa. Well, he knew me before because I'd done some ads for him because he used to have an ad agency. He says, um, do you want to come and audition for a role? Yeah, fine. So I did the audition and said, yeah, you got a part. I said, yay. But I had no clue what I was letting myself in for. I didn't know. I'd never done a movie or anything. So um, I went and after the initial shock of doing things back to front and out of sequence and not knowing where I am, you know, I got into the swing of things and it was all very exciting. But I had never imagined that it was going to have the impact that it did. So it was afterwards and all the excitement and everybody wanted to see it. And like you're saying, I'd meet people and say, oh, I've seen it 10 times. I'm like, why? <laughs> why? Um, but I think what happened was it was new. It was, um, even though we had done movies before, I think for the first time, people really saw themselves on the screen. And it was just such a period of excitement. And wherever we were, you know, in Zimbabwe, Kenya, people were just, just going crazy. Uh, so I think it just happened at the time when it hadn't happened before. And it was a novelty and it was exciting and it was just so brilliant that people could see themselves on, on, on screen. I mean, admittedly, it was a good storyline. Because, and what, what was the thing about it? Because I don't quite remember, but I just knew mm. it was only available to watch during Christmas somehow. And then after that, it seems to disappear. <laughs> I, don't, I, I, don't, I don't quite remember that, but you know, you're possibly right because <laughs> it, it was, it was showed over a period of, you know, time and it was a, a released. A long period of yeah, time. Yeah, it was released every, every now and, and then. So even though I, I can't remember, I can, I can see how, it, it became mm. like a, a part of, of a Christmas treat for people to, to go and see. So I guess it must have been somewhere in the planning 
um, of Mr. Sanders. Well, let me tell you how long it ran. I mean, mm. it ran from me being absolutely petrified of the witch mm -hmm. to going to her and saying, oh, who designed this mask? You'd have done something better. You know, that's, how, that's how long it stayed on the screen. You know, yes. one minute, you know, any time this witch came out, you know, I get nightmares. And then I grew up and then I saw them and thinking, oh, they could have designed this mask a bit better. You know, I've grown. Uh, you know, no. are, are you still in touch with all the guys that played at the time? Or? Oh, no, not at the, because um, it's, it's an old film and some of them have passed on. Mm. Um, Reggie, who played uh, my Joe, mm -hmm. we met several years ago in England. Um, but we're talking, oh, what, some at least 10 years wow. back and I haven't I haven't seen him since and I haven't really been in touch with with any any of the other members of the cast either I think we've all sort of gone out gone our separate ways and sort of disappeared into doing other things and all uh, that. there's a there's a bond between you and Kohan Sasa, an mm. unwritten convention which yes. doesn't seem to break <laughs> I mean, <laughs> is it that you, uh, you know, caught your hand in a cookie jar and he says, look, if, if you don't work for me, I'm going He's to got tell. got something on me. <laughs> you know, if you don't work for me, I'm going to tell on you or something. Because it, it's just there, and, yes. you know, unbreakable. Yes. What, what is it? Um, it's, it's difficult to say because after the movie, we just kept in touch. Well, like I said, I knew him before anyway. Um, and we just kept in touch. So I went to England and, and he was working. But... Every time he came to England, he'd get in touch and he said, oh, he would say, we have to do something more. Of course, it was a first, you know, we'd work, we'd done something and we thought we could do more. And I suppose because we work so well together, he, he always had it in mind that he'd work with me again in the future. So we were in touch. I knew about his plans, you know, the script that he was writing, the past he wanted me to come and play. So it was, you know, there's work to be done at home and, and we have a friendship I mean Kwa would come mm. and come to the house he stayed with us in London you know so it goes beyond mm. just director and actor I think we have a, we have a true friendship as well you know sometimes we disagree over things we fight and you know sometimes you know but we always that friendship has never never been broken heritage Africa mm -hmm. you see probably somebody just watched the movie and go home but if ever the nation needed any story to be told today, it's Heritage Africa. I, I, I think somehow it has to be shown, maybe from secondary school to secondary school or something. I don't know who's going to engineer it, though. But what a story and how true it is. You know, back then, as if you knew what you know, yeah. was happening. Yeah. Uh, who, who's, whose story was it? It's all Kwa's. You know, um, Kwa has always been very passionate about Africa. And so this was a story that he that he had to tell. It, it, it was just that simple, you know. He he, I'm sure he'd thought about it for several years, and and there was no running away from it. It was something that he was going to tell, you know, about our heritage and how, um, you know, we try to get away from it and then the, the pretentiousness. I mean, if he's my husband, he was more of the gentleman, ho, 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 <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. I mean, the whole fake thing and, and the names. I mean, um, Sansa will always give you all the, like, uh, uh, bosom field instead of a uh, bosom you know. Uh, and these are things that he continues to say. Yes. Exactly. And, and, I mean, like, Kwa can give you so many names that have been sort of, you know, mm, gone through that kind of thing and changed in, you know, where they came from. Um, so so it, it was just something that he was going to tell by hook or by crook. And so fortunately, he was able to get the funding for us to, to come back and, and do that. I hope, I hope he takes it to you know, secondary schools and get them to watch it, not for the entertainment, but for the education aspect of it. Yes. Now, we're going to go beyond uh, ABBA, before ABBA. I see, there you are with a, with a moderator as a father, mm -hmm. you know, so you should be a nurse, a teacher, <laughs> you know, maybe at worst an accountant, you know, but then, you know, you know but old fashioned, prim and proper, you know, yeah. green, with your white cape and everything, but you're an actor on a stage. Yeah. I mean, how did Papa, uh, as we call him, take it? Well, it, it, it's funny. I just have to say this thing about me being an accountant. I mean, Figures and I, um, don't, don't, we've never met. met. And one thing that I'll never forget, my, um, my math teacher in her report actually said, 
Joyce is bewildered. I'm just subject. <laughs> I mean, that was it. It was like, I was Dude. never going to get it. Dude. Dude. <laughs> never going to get it. But this thing about being a, um, a, 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 like a reverend's daughter, you know, when I think about it, I think it's performance. Even when you stand up to preach, it's, yeah, in a way, it's a performance. Mm. And I think I got that, that bit, you know, that whole idea of performing from him. But I think I was also very lucky in that he wasn't one of these really um, prude, prim, and proper priests, like you should a priest or that you should do this. And he was very liberal. I don't know if it was just with me, but um, I was pretty much free to choose what I wanted mm. to do. And um, he supported me. I mean, he would come to my, my stage plays, and he was actually very proud when Love Good came out. He said, It's my daughter. It's my daughter. <laughs> but there, was a, there was a kissing scene. In Labrud, in Labrud, in Africa, I think there was a there was a kissing scene, uh, well, or, was, or like a cuddling was, scene or somewhere back then. Probably not kidding. And, and but a rape scene. Yes. Yeah. How, how did he take it? You well, know? he never said anything, so I I just assume he, well, it was okay for him. I mean, I, I'm sure you look at it as well. It's, it's just she's a film. Like, she's she's just acting. A film. Yeah, she's just acting. And maybe even if he felt like, oh, I'm not too comfortable with this, maybe he forced himself to rise above it. it because he never actually said anything to me about it. He, the, the impression I had was that he was always quite proud of, of me doing what meant. I was doing. Well, as a child, my first ever play, my grandfather took me to uh, the art center and to go and watch my auntie in a play, not you. And I still remember the theme song of the play. And I think I need to just apologize to viewers <laughs> that, you know, just let me sing for just five <laughs> seconds. And then, you know, I've apologized already. And it goes like, oh, way, mambo, way, on an army, they're You know, and it was, I think, a, a Macbeth play reenacted, you know, with an African twist. Yes. yes. And I was very, very young, but I still remember this theme song from yeah. all. So that play must have made an impression. What happened to the arts? Oh, that's a big question. I don't know. Um... I mean, to be on, um, to be frank, I think it's, it's, it's picking up now, you know, mm -hmm. there, there was a, a, a long vacuum, mm -hmm. but I just remember that it was so crazy. We just loved it. And we, we didn't have a national theater. I think we just had the art center, the art center. didn't we? Mm -hmm. And every time we had a performance, the place was packed and we'd have it for days and people, and we weren't making money. We, I remember we had a, a group called the Dawn Theatre. We never had any money. So we'd just go around and beg people for money even to make our posters. But we were so crazy. We were not going to give it up. We just loved it. And I think that that whole period, that culture was there. Everybody loved it. Everybody loved to go to the, to the you know, uh, theatre and, and watch something. And um, it died a few generations. Uh, you know, quite, quite a long time nothing was happening. Mm -hmm. But well, fortunately, I think it's, it's starting to now. pick up and now. It's Uncle Abu and the yes, rubber man in Co. Yes, is yes, picking up now. Yes. And the other thing is uh, the quality of movies now. And I go back to uh, I Told You So, was mm -hmm. it Bob Cole's I yes, Told You So? Yes, Bob Cole. You could tell the actors in the movie were not professional actors, but the film itself was professionally mm. shot, even to today in black and white. Yes. You don't mind watching from start to finish of it. What happened to the quality? What, what happened to the quality of the movie? Because, you know, I don't want to mention some actor's name, but you yeah. look at it and you think, my goodness. <laughs> you know, and, and that's the majority. Yes, yes. I remember, yeah, I told you so, Mr. Mensa builds the house. And I, I think the main difference is that, like you said, they were shot professionally. Mm. And people who were involved in it were all professional. They knew what they were doing. They knew when it came to script writing, what the tricks to do to make it interesting. They knew how to create suspense. So all that came together. Um, I think what happened in, in the vacuum that was created was that people would see something and think, oh, I want to do that. And really, all they had to do was to pick up a camera. And it didn't matter whether you knew how to put a script together. It didn't matter whether you knew how to direct. You had an idea that you could do it, and you went ahead and did it. And, you know, if, if you're somebody who knows about movies, you can watch it and think, what is that? But then there are a lot of people who don't have that kind of understanding of film and just seeing the pictures is, is sort of enough for okay. them. 
Uh, and so because I, uh, there are a lot of these people who would go and see these things anyway, it became sort of the norm. You know, you could just, as long as you had a few pictures, you know, strung mm -hmm. together yeah. and a few people talking and somebody doing something funny, you were okay. I hear sometimes they gather on set and say, okay, today, this is what we're going to do. Yes. And so everybody think, I mean, this is the rules. Everybody think of yeah. what you're going to say. Yeah. Action. A action. And then you do it, you know, <laughs> and you still have your audience, you know, because there are people who, like I said, you know, if you haven't been introduced to film from a certain angle, that is your introduction to film. So that's what you know, and that's what is normal, and that's what you enjoy. So I would sit, like, if, if I watch some of these movies with somebody, and I was thinking, I think, oh, this is so slow. Oh. But they're like, hey. You know, or I go to my hairdresser, right, and they have this <laughs> story on, and it's the most ridiculous story. And they are pulling at my hair because they are, you know, really looking at it. Hey, let me see. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> they are so engrossed. You, dare, you dare not criticize. You dare not. And you're sitting there thinking. <laughs> really? Really? You know, but then it's, it's what they know and, and what they like. And, I, and I, I think until such a time that they're all introduced to new things and they, they can compare and think, mm, I think I like that better for this reason or whatever reason. That's what, what is going to be. I mean... Ah, but I, I like that. I like that better scheme mm -hmm. because, you know, uh, uh, Labrador in the African port then is now sort of Adam's apple sort of revolutionizing, saying that, you know something, let us raise the bar and build it and they will come. Yes. And then I hear people say that, oh, this is too pretentious and, you yeah. know, why are they in that house and yeah. why are they driving that car? As if it wasn't even shot in Ghana and that was shot in Hollywood and they're implanting in Ghana. Why are we refusing to, you know, follow the bar, you I, know, come I, up? I, well, see, the thing is, I've never really understood some of these, um, let's say, criticisms. Mm. Like they say, oh, ah, but this is not, it's not African, you know, I mean, what is it? So, okay, saying it's shot here. Ghanaian people live in this house, you know, Ghanaian people the work, they are doctors, <laughs> they are nurses, you know, they are career people, and it's fine. And if you want to cut to, you know, relatives in the village, which is how we all live. Mm -hmm. I mean, I live somewhere else. I can go to Kibi and live in my small house mm -hmm. and visit my aunties, and that's another story that's to be told. But I don't understand why people will say, oh, but... It's not African. Are they saying that if it's African, then it has to be limited just to the location? Dingy, poverty, yes. witchcraft. It doesn't necessarily have to be that. You can bring in different aspects of the story. I mean, the world has moved on. We've all changed. We are never going to be what we were a hundred years ago. You know, everything is so small. The internet is there. We, we, we are introduced to certain things. And we are not the only people that different cultures have affected. I mean, if you go to England, your favorite food now is curry. It's Britain's <laughs> favorite food. They're like, really Hello. seriously? <laughs> so sometimes we behave like, oh, you know, everybody's bringing in this bad culture and it's affecting us and, and we are not doing things properly like we were, we're perfect. perfect and we are not. So I, I have never really agreed with that criticism. I mean, for example, you talk about um, Lovewood would have been the Adam Supples now, mm -hmm. right? Because but it was, it was a very middle class family. I mean, if you took Lovewood, Abba's dad was, you know, yeah, always in his, his braces, his car mm -hmm. is out front, the they live in a nice little bungalow. So why would yeah, that be yeah, more African? For him? Yeah, tea, you know? <laughs> why is that more African than a set in, 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 in Adam's apples, you know? What, what, what makes one more African? So I think that people are too easy are to... Are we building a culture where we think that as soon as you are wealthy, you, you have to apologize? Yeah. It's as if anybody who is in the limelight, especially if you are wealthy, it's like the demand and apology from you. I don't know if we are building a culture like that. Well, well, possibly, possibly. I mean, I don't, I don't understand why it's so difficult to aspect, uh, you know, to to accept that there's so many different aspects to us, and that if if someone is t telling a story, and their story happened in a place like Trasaco, because that's where the, that is her story. 
that is his story and he has a right to tell it just as much as anybody else. Uh, if you lived all your life in, in a village somewhere and that's where all your stories come from because the people you know and your experiences are from that place. Because for every creative person, is, is you, you create from your experience. So that is also fine. And if, if there's a, a time that the two can be combined because that is what makes the story, then that's fine. I think everybody has a story. George, do you think that you know the thinking of the masses, if I may use it, is because mm. of the pictures they see. And if you look at the way everybody's going to church now because there's a witch chasing them, because every other movie tells them that, the, in fact, next room is a witch they're waiting mm. to. And that maybe if we had seen more of Adam's apples, we aspire to say, no, I also need to be a lawyer rather than the other witch. I... Yeah, I mean, I see where you're coming from. I mean, that's, that's possible because when you're growing up and you're very impressionable, pictures that you see either from magazines or from movies and they do they do influence you so like you're saying it's it's possible you can have negative and you can have positive effects from from everything because there's no time that everything was perfect, perfect. and all the children were good and everybody was happy so if you can focus on, on the things that are positive and art reflects life and life isn't always perfect there'll always be people who are not the kind of people we would like to be. And there'll always be people that will aspire to be. Now, I think if you have a, a child who's watching or something, sometimes it's up to you to encourage them to, to focus on what the positive aspects are. But you can't say that you can't do anything that um, depicts something that is negative because then it's going to affect somebody. Because we should be able, as adults, to see things that we want to see and make our choices. And if we have children, then it's up to us as adults to also guide them to make the, the positive choices that we want them so, to make. So what's the art institution doing? NAFTI or KSM, I go yourself, you know. <laughs> what, what are you doing to make sure that we are churning out people who bring positive pictures out, even if it's a bad story, to be told for the guy watching to know that he's living a life that I'm not supposed to live, even if it's a bad story. It's told in a way that the viewer, so that, you know, we all mm. see better things and aspire for bigger heights. So I think the owners are now on, on you guys. Oh, on us. <laughs> right, I mean, I think that you can only do what you can do. And in, in your own little corner, you can try and push for something that is the best that you can do. I think that film is, it can be educational and it can be just entertainment. I mean, there are p people who are of the opinion that it should never be just entertainment. You should always want to do something. But I think creative people, sometimes you want to do things just for the beauty of it, just for, you know. But what, what we can do is we have to tell our stories as they are. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, and if, if it, you need to say something which is not good, because that will teach a lesson, then I think you have to do it. And I think that's what we want to do. We want to, in our own little corner, if we are able to get the funding to come up with, with something that is interesting, but also make people think, make people think, because that is one thing that I think um, we, we were deprived of in our cultural, um, do cultural us, upbringing because, told. yeah, we, you are too known. What are you asking that for? So a lot of us have grown up not really knowing how to think, Question except, things. you know, and just accepting everything that uh, somebody in authority says, because as a, they know what they're doing, even though not everybody who's, <laughs> you know. Um, so I think we can only tell stories and hope that they are balanced enough for people to make a judgment and say, yeah, okay, looking at this story now, this is something that we don't think is very positive. I mean, we should focus on, on, on as much as possible on what we think is negative. You see, because... On um, what we think is positive, sorry. Because Grandpa was so over... I don't know, I don't say over power, maybe because of his status of a, of a moderator and he was there for 12 years and he was a larger than life character. He was. Everybody seems to overshadow the role of Auntie Mary or Grandma Mary. But in her own way, she was a very dynamic force. But she never, who, who was she and how did she influence you or in your growing up? Did she make you domesticated or was she the liberal one? Oh, yeah, you can go and come as you please or <laughs> she's the strict one. Who, who was she? Uh, it's, it's really strange. I think she, 
she attempted to be strict, but she really had a soft side to her as well because mm -hmm. we used to tell her, and sometimes she didn't understand things, like if we wanted to go out, we say, oh, we are going to buy uh, something, something, apparatus or something, and she'd be like, oh, okay. Mm -hmm. She wouldn't question her, but she'd, she'd just trust us you know, that we're going to do something. Um, I don't recall her really like shouting or saying this is what you have to do this is i think it was all by example i mean mm -hmm. she worked very hard at, at some point she was she used to make clothes and you know and and sell so she was in a way a bit of a role model but she wasn't a walkover mm -hmm. and she would challenge grandpa as you say you know <laughs> uh, uh, you know <laughs> stuff like that so in a way i grew up with that kind of of picture of, of womanhood that you don't have to sit there because your husband shouts and you have to say, mm -hmm. well, excuse me, <laughs> but you can't, you can't do that. Um, so it was, it was all very subtle, mm -hmm. but I think it did, it did really influence all of us and that we became quite independent in, in, in how we thought about things. She must have an absolute daunting road because grandpa was a crowd puller mm -hmm. and you, you know, he's always moving about or having guests in and she would probably have to be there making sure that everything, you know, works in order. Yeah. And grandpa was a little bit of a bully. You know? Yes. Yeah, I know grandpa. <laughs> <laughs> the ah, I yes. him. He was. <laughs> <laughs> because <laughs> uh, yep. I remember there was a new driver in the house, I'm mm -hmm. told, and, you know, he turns, the driver turns up late. So he absolutely tells the driver mm. off. And the driver says, as soon as we come back from church, you know, I'm leaving the job. So grandpa gets in the car and apparently grandma is late and she's shouting, F ya, F ya. The driver says, okay, it's normal then. <laughs> yeah, it's normal. <laughs> it's yeah, normal. Yeah. If, if this is a fear, then I know. Um, yeah. but, so how did grandma handle it? That's what I'm trying to get to. Well, I, I never saw that she had any issues because she'd always, I mean, like you're saying, if people have to come and all that, she should do it. Uh, but I think the good thing about us is that there's always the help and, you know, you can always mm -hmm. sort of, you know, just organize things to be done. But she was always there. I mean, there was never any reason for, you know, gra grandpa or papa to, to be dissatisfied. But wherever it was like, you know, if yeah, if yeah, I mean, like if she was dressing, you can shout till you're blue in the face. She won't come out till she's ready. <laughs> that kind of sort of quiet <laughs> rebellion which I think I got a lot from, you know. Um, she, she's not going to come and confront you and make a lot of noise, but she'll do what she has to, to do, do in her own time. Let's go back to London, you know, before I take my break. Did you miss Ghana then, or were you comfortable in your zone and you thought, you know what, let's forget about Ghana, let me just settle here? No, I, I think you always miss home. Um, the first few years, especially, you know, after two years, you think, oh, I want to go home. I can't stand the cold. I'm terrible in the cold weather. Even when they say it's summer, I'm still wearing jackets. So, yeah, there were lots of times when I really missed home and I, and, and I wanted to come. But, you know, when you go and then you start to work and all that, and the time was inappropriate. But I did miss, I miss Ghana a lot. There's always the ups and downs, you know, different challenges depending on where you are. Mm -hmm. Uh, what was the one thing that you liked in in, in London? Everything oh, works. <laughs> <laughs> I take I take, I take my break here. Everything works. When we come back, we're gonna find out how things work here. Stay tuned. <laughs>